friend. This planet and these people have changed me. Okay, like, right, boys, welcome back to another episode. Casual kind of discussions with the boys. Friend. All right, we're back on the uh, normal, usual MCU train, and this is episode 28. And, you know, we've got quite the uh, ensemble here for quite the subpar mediocre movie. <laughs> uh, I don't know how else to put it, but yes, we are looking at Eternals. Uh, the, uh, what was it, like the third installment in phase four? And yeah, I don't know how else to put it. It was it was something. It was there. It's uh definitely critics didn't uh didn't enjoy it. But um anyways, we'll give our thoughts, our views on how we felt about it uh throughout this podcast. Uh we'll we'll push through with our usual segments. Oh uh, well somewhat newly introduced segments from our last pod, our Shang Chi one. And uh, that is just, you know, phase one to four. We'll start off with phase one, which is essentially the good, the bad, uh, essentially our initial feels of it, whether we enjoyed it, what things, yeah, what, what, if it had any positives and all the negatives we're probably going to get into with it. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger initiative. I'll start with the positives because you know I feel like it's uh it'll be brief and it's uh it's a good place to start. <laughs> uh, well, actually, when I first watched it though, I didn't think it was as bad as what the critics had given it. I think they gave it. Uh, I can't remember what they gave it. Um, does anyone know? More like tomato. Maybe. I think it's like um in the forties, fifties. Forty-seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't think. It was that bad at the at the time when I had watched it, but uh, on rewatch and kind of just digesting it in a sense, I was just like, "Yeah, this is this is definitely a forty seven percent movie." What did I miss? Nothing, just the screams of my deep disappointment. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> but anyways, in regards to the positives, um, I thought okay, it was cool to have again something new. Um, something different again for the MCU. I uh, like when they do something fresh. Uh, by no means was it like as engaging or as good as Shang Chi was, but again, it was something new, and uh, I guess a different universe in a sense because we were introduced again to these Eternals, so I steals and all that. Um, another positive which you guys may talk about, and we'll talk more about uh, in the next phase, is the uh, casting. I thought it was a pretty strong cast because they had you know, kind of uh, like new actors that were pretty good, but also some of the the old, like well-known actors in it. Um, as to how, whether they were effectively used or not, we'll talk about that later. Um, I did like actually the historical context that they tried to like um, justify, like, um, like the, the, how their involvement throughout moments of, history uh on earth or whatever like the implications that had i thought that was pretty cool pretty clever in a sense um there were some bits of humor that i did kind of find funny uh mostly the fish out of water stuff like the awkwardness of the eternals and sometimes their banter between one another was all right it's just sometimes it went a bit overboard like uh you could tell again it's just like they were forcing in that typical mcu humor that you know again gets overused at times um or actually i thought the cgi was unique i won't say it was like the best i've ever seen but i did like you know the whole like gold lines and that kind of style of things it was different um and i thought that was cool and the i mean the <laughs> icarus was literally superman but it's probably <laughs> like how it was in the comics but like again like their powers were cool like and you had a speed star i thought that was unique how they did uh Mik- mikari's um, speed thing with the lines and all that fastos's mm-hmm. powers i think yeah it was it was like it was pretty unique in a sense so i like that and the fights were uh, were pretty cool um uh, i did like you know to a degree like they did keep within the mcu plot for the most part like uh they didn't <laughs> obviously there was a lot of reaching because like 
uh, well, I'll talk about it later, but like I did like they they kind of referred to the Avengers, like they had that chat about, oh, who's going to lead the Avengers now? That type of thing. Uh, they talked about how, you know, the the implications of Thanos's um, snapping or blip, whatever. I don't want to call it that. I hate that. And then also like <laughs> the um, Kingo's reference to Thor, how he knew him since he was a boy um, and like, you know, how... Uh, Jon Snow's character was uh, referring to Cersei as like a Doctor Strange wizard. I, I, I like it when they do that type of thing, you know, like those links to the MCU, but also trying to keep it within, trying to keep it within the MCU universe. I like how you, I like how you just called him Jon Snow's character, <laughs> not Kit Harrington. Kit Harrington, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but the one thing I think I like the most as a positive is the big questions like it like presents and how each character has their own views on it, like. Uh, whether, you know, when you have that much power or as gods, in a sense, should you interfere? Like, how much should you interfere with things? How much should you help? Um, also, the questions about free will and also the question about uh, the greater good, whether this uh, these lives are worth the next lives, all that, yada, yada, yada. I, liked, I actually like those aspects. Uh, the delivery and kind of the uh, keeping us engaged with those wasn't delivered great but i did like those questions and i did like that each character had their own view regarding that to a, to a degree but yeah in regards to my positives the good things about this for, on my first impressions that was it as for the, all the bad things which is pretty much the rest of the movie um as cool as it, as it was to expand the mcu uh it was a lot to take in and for a movie that was kind of boring, in a sense, I, I I wasn't all for it because it was just like, yeah, this is cool, this is interesting, but this movie is so boring. Like, it, it, it's hard to like keep an audience into that stuff. Like, you know how usually after we watch like an MCU movie, we we start like googling all this and that. After this, I was just like, uh, I really just didn't care enough. So I was just like, oh uh, yeah, whatever. I'll just wait till the next one. <laughs> maybe it'll explain more but like it was just so i don't know for a story that dragged on quite a bit and um was you know meant to expand the universe i was just like that kind of that kind of dragged and again it wasn't done in a way as i expected i thought this movie was going to be more out there than it was but uh yeah it just wasn't and then there was a lot of unnecessary moments you guys will probably talk about uh where things kind of dragged especially when because you know how each of the Eternals were, they kind of all split up. So they had to go and like retrieve each and every one. And that kind of dragged. But like, I also think, remember the hype up for like, this will be Marvel's first MCU sex scene or something. It was just, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. to me, it was just so unnecessary within the movie. And I was just like, why did they add that? Like, I, I get that they're trying to, you know, uh, I'm not sure if this is what they're trying to do, but they're trying to like, talk about this relationship between them and like how they're i guess they're understanding more human bonds and relationships and love with one another type thing but like you didn't have to put in the sex thing for it like it was just like i don't know to me it was unnecessary i don't know maybe if there's like some artistic thing or whatever but i was just like uh, it, i didn't need that like i was just like that's pointless apparently that was only done in one take oh it's like a one-shot fight scene one-shot sex scene yeah, yeah, like they did one take and they didn't actually need multiple takes. It was like a 30-second take and they were done, like, mm. apparently. Again, like, what was the point? Like, oh, I don't know. Not much yeah, when I read it, I was like, when I was, and then watched it, I was like, mm, that, like we haven't seen it again in a Marvel movie. And we, like, it, that makes it sound like it was something they wanted to get out of the way. They're just like, we've got to put this in. Don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> and like, they, they'll use the characters that are 7,000 years old. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Yeah. What were you going to say, Fitz? Uh, I was just going to say, you know, how, like, whenever, like, with Iron Man, how there's, like, a new technology or something and you see him, like, combining things and putting the tech together and all that. Yeah. For them, they're like, okay, how do we do this again? Well, they're two machines. <laughs> so the more you struggle, the more this is going to hurt. Give me a gentle. This is my first time. I designed this to come off, so... Put them together. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. If, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, the other negatives, again, 
I did talk about, yes, it was a strong cast, a mix of like new actors and like veteran actors, but um, they were underused. Again, I think it was because moments dragged because they were like, they were focusing on certain stories as they, you know, tried to like retrieve each of the Eternals. But then as they did that, you kind of like um, took away from potential storylines or development each one could have. Um, and yeah, again, I'll we'll probably talk about that in castings. And I think you still feel like after it, even though they said like they didn't interfere because, you know, they wanted the earth to progress and grow. And like, if they interview, they prevent that, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think it's still a bit of a reach and people are still like, yeah, but you can do something like the event. You could have helped the Avengers, blah, blah, blah. Um, and finally, my final point is guardians did it better. Guardians introduce a random group of heroes or people. And yeah, they did it in a way that was unique, uh, engaging, fun, and it balanced the humor, plot, and action. It, was just, it just dragged and it was boring. So yeah, that's my feels on it. Uh, phase one feels um, liquor, if any. <laughs> oh, also, welcome back to the plot. Been a while. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, a lot similar to you. So going into the movie, there was a lot of hype around this because super powerful characters, mm. like a big group, um, sort of like a, <clears throat> I won't call it a Justice League sort of level group where you have like lots of characters because that's sort of the Avengers is mm. the Marvel Justice League. Um, or is the Justice League the DC Avengers? <laughs> Batman, you look like a retarded magpie, okay? At least all of us have movies. What do you got? Yeah. Nothing, man. You got no movies. I'd rather have no movies than two shit ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? You know what? We don't have time. We don't have time for this. <laughs> Check the comics, see which group <laughs> came into play first. I'm not well, in Justice Society 1943, um, first edition, no. <laughs> keep it. Yeah. I, th- I think, I think they, they might have done t- I don't know. But yeah. I'm not sure. Mm. But yeah. So, like, that was the thing, like, going in, it was like, oh, awesome, like, a big group, lots of characters, and, like, another massive, like, it would, and I've, I've said this in a few of them, but then another big expansion to the MCU, mm. where we're now getting a whole, we're getting a whole new level of, not elementals, what was Eternals. it? Eternals. No, no, above the Eternals. <laughs> oh, Celestials. Yeah, Celestials, sorry. Yeah. It's like we'd sort of seen Celestials, but now we're getting a whole other level of Celestial, like a planetary level Celestial, sort of, mm. which we had with Ego, but now, again, on another scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yes, the Eternals and then all the other Eternals and all of that. Sort of like... <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. Sorry. I'll <laughs> stop. <laughs> um, so that had me real hyped. And then as well, the cast. Like, it's a sick cast. Like, you've got some really good actors and actresses in there. Um, so for me, that built up a lot of hype for it. But then watching it, and same as you, Zeta, got like coming out from the watch, I was like, oh, like, it wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, you look at all the reviews from Tomato and IMDb and all of that, and it's like 5 out of 10, 4.5 out of 10. Yeah. Like not very good ratings, um, but it definitely like it definitely hasn't held up in no. the MCU like it should have for what we I think we everyone expected to get. Mm. Um, I can't remember the soundtrack. I always talk about soundtracks, but I can't remember this one. It was it was weird because they, I I, I remember there being like they had like songs like actual songs, but then they had its own music at certain points. Yeah. So they, I think they tried to mix a bit of both, but I think from memory it wasn't too bad because it did have some of that like culture, historical sort yeah. of music come into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was okay. Um, the CGI again, awesome. Like showing the celestials and all of that, that was really cool. Done really well. It did stretch. Like that's a negative. Yeah. It felt like a long movie. I think it's one of the only Marvel movies where I've sat in there and gone, yeah, this feels long. Like, we could, let's skip some of this crap and just yeah. get to it. Because um, I remember at the beginning, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm like kind of with this. But then mm. 
uh like you know the whole like there's more to it on the surface like um in regards to you know what the celestials are actually up to and the purpose yeah. of the eternals and their origin but yeah mm. it just kept going yeah it dragged and then it went yeah the whole getting the band back together <laughs> and all that and it just took so long to get to the actual eternaling part of the eternals yeah um <laughs> yeah the costumes were sick i like the costumes yeah, they had some really cool outfits. The powers were cool, like you were saying. So mm-hmm. even though it's like we pretty much had a flash in the Superman. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was or an A train and a Homelander. <laughs> what did you say? Nothing. Nothing? What did you I'm say sorry. to me? I'm sorry. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. I I didn't mean it. Say it. Say it. I'm sorry. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were cool. Oh, the negatives. The dude that controlled minds was a bit annoying. <laughs> Jerubi, whatever his name is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a he was a turd in that movie. <laughs> his character is such a turd. <laughs> I think uh, it fits isn't he one of your favourite ones. Yeah, but we'll get to me. <laughs> oh, he's such a turd of a character. Like, yeah. I remember being angry at his character when they're going to like try and get everyone back together and it's just like uh, completely against them <laughs> and that's when it's a bit like icarus kill this fool <laughs> like just finish him off now and get the band back together like let's go Ugh. that's a waste of time yeah um the black knight thing was cool so uh, like you were saying where nothing no it wasn't <laughs> um, <laughs> and because it was like and it's because the blade sure you're ready for that mr whitman um but yeah i think that was like when you're saying that we didn't really google anything once we walked out i think that was the only thing i googled yeah actually i walked out and i was like end credit scene had a read of it and then i was like looking up a bit of the black knight on wikipedia and stuff but that's about it i didn't want to know anything about the eternals yeah uh positives another yeah another positive to me i'll say is i still think the end credits do hold up like after Mm. each one like you still it still gets you excited in a sense for yeah. what comes next and what's yeah. coming. Uh, think, but you know, kind of just randomly introducing Harry Styles as dinosaur. Yeah, that was weird. I was just like, oh, that uh, was weird. okay. You yeah, know, that one had me like sort of just looking at the screen, like, what just happened? Mm. But like, I like the I like the other one more than that one. Yeah. Um, I think they. It's almost like they sort of tried to use the Guardians formula. Yeah, maybe. Work. To a degree, yeah, I'd say. Because, like, the Guardians are this fun humour group where the Eternals are, like, this serious group. Yeah. So a lot of the humour just wasn't well-timed or it took away from the scene. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, that didn't really need to be there. Like, it's... Like, and this was in Cinema Sins, so this isn't mm-hmm. my own thought. <laughs> but, like, they tell um, Gilgamesh that Ajax is dead. And then, like, the pie dropping out of the pan. It's like, there's, like, a serious scene. Like, we don't need some any humour in there. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it's like they tried to use the Guardian's recipe and it sort of just failed a little bit. They dropped the pie on that one. Yeah. And, we, and hell, we even saw Guardians too. Yeah. Cover your ears, Fitz. Um, where they tried to reuse the Guardian's formula in a Guardian's movie and it didn't work. So, like, <laughs> why do it again? <laughs> uh i guess it got oh, i don't actually if i had to say which was worse i don't know if i could guardians 2 for me will always be one of the worst mcu movies <laughs> like if i was going to walk over an mcu movie that's the one uh, yeah yeah i i feel like ego put a bad name on what celestials are or whatever excuse me gotta take a whiz <laughs> but yeah all righty Look, I, I do, uh, as a final thought, I do want to see the Celestials again in the MCU mm. and, like, what other stories they can bring into the MCU because they can't just disappear. Mm. What like, about the Eternals themselves? What did I just say? Oh, that's Celestials. another movie. No, because oh, you said... Oh, sorry, I was, sorry, I was meant to say Eternals, not Celestials. Oh, okay. Because I um, want to see the Celestials. <laughs> well, yeah, I do want to see the Celestials because I think there is, like, a big... I think we are coming to that sort of level battle. 
yeah, yeah. Um, now that they're introduced. Mm. But yeah, I would love to see the Eternals in the MCU a bit more. Um, because yeah, they can't be ignored, and yeah. like you can't just bring in these super powerful characters and then just not use them again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we had nice. phase one for me. All right, for two, your phase one feels. Yeah. So basically, for me, is um the best way to describe it is essentially that there's a good ninety minute movie in this, but it's so drawn out that it's just just full of um sorry can you hear my dog <laughs> a little bit <laughs> a little i'm worried it's gonna like overflow like what i'm saying it's, a, it's like what he, he was a big fan of eternals so. <laughs> <laughs> okay but yeah basically what i'm saying is like there's a good 90 minutes in this movie that's about you know existence about, and like i'm not too overly into cosmic stuff but i am interested in like 2001 space odyssey type sort of thing wh- where it like goes into like why are we here what is our connection to the cosmos uh what is our life compared to lives all out across the universe and i thought that was an interesting take mm. but um what kind of brings it down is it's kind of strange where it's like it relies on the marvel formula to its bare bones as in it's not like other films that when they rely on the marvel formula where it's like they throw in all the gags and all the laughs and follow the same story it's like they leave these pockets open where it's like okay this is where i'm supposed to laugh but the series the scene doesn't really like it doesn't call for it eh? it doesn't call for it yeah so or but there's not even a quip. There's not even a laugh. And when it is, it's so like the, the tone doesn't work for it. And even like when the characters do it, it's more, I'm watching someone make a joke, but I'm not relating to the joke. Mm. And that's how I felt like, you know, I was really keen for what's his name. The actor, um, is it Kim, Kim Nanjani <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not even trying, but you're talking about the guy who plays Kingo. Yeah. Like yeah. he's very, um, big in like comedy movies and like i've seen him start to make more of a move into the drama mm. so when it came to this i was like okay this you know i'm really keen for this i'm really keen to see because i really believed it was going to be this real breakout role yeah but like what ends up happening is like even though i think he's doing a great job i feel like by the point that we get to him i'm already drained i'm like this whole film is essentially the first act of a, of a film where they introduce all the characters except mm. this is all happening so by the time i get to him i'm already tired and then like i said he's making jokes but it's not so much that his jokes aren't landing it's like what i'm saying the film doesn't cater for there to be humor so the jokes don't work and so like he's um the director that works with him that has yeah his humor sort of works mm. but again it's just like a real mis- mishmash of tone um, I actually like Droig. I know uh, that's the name of <laughs> um, but I think like for me, I wasn't invested in the first half hour of this film. I literally was seeing a thing, oh no, like how like this is a long film and I have to sit through this. Like <laughs> I'm into a, I'm into history, yet I hated all the Babylon stuff. And maybe because mm-hmm. to me it was just so generic and how they did it. Okay. And then even like the characters for me weren't developed because it was just this constant, we love these people. Oh, we love these people. Oh, we love these people. Thanks, Cersei. Listen, humanity may be coming along slower than some of us want, but there is no telling what wonders they will discover as they advance. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you? Oh, but we love these people. They all sit around in Babylon and go, oh, we love these people. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> so when we get to Druig and it's like, yeah, I actually want to make a change and what we're doing isn't working. That's when it gets interesting for me. So like, when we get to his commune and it, and like the whole idea, he's take away free will. It's like, this is how we fix the issue. I'm like, now we're getting interesting. Mm. But yeah, till then I'm just, yeah. And like, I was really excited because they brought in like the actors from Game of Thrones, like Richard Madden mm. and Kit yeah. Harrington. Yeah. But again, these are the, I keep saying this to Robin and I hope this makes sense. But um. It's like the whole thing with um, Dane Whitman, Kid Harrington's character, where it's like 
he's dating um what's her name Cersei. Cersei yeah. And it's like, like he, it's like he's trying to do something different than just um I had no idea that you were an Eternal. This is a big shock. He's trying to do something different, but how it comes off is like he's just dumb. That like he goes out clubbing with her and her eleven year old friend who's like bossing him around and be, make him feel like he shouldn't be there. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, this is all, you know, there's something a bit weird going on here, but, you know, I'm totally cool with us clubbing with you. And it's weird you have an 11-year-old best friend who's, like, telling me off. But, you know, that's all cool. And then by the time the um, deviants come, he's like, you know, I think something's a bit off. Can you tell me what's going on? And then when he finally talks to her, it's like, oh, what? why didn't you help with Thanos? I'm like, how you just it's like you just you, you don't you're in the wrong movie you, like you don't he knows, he knows nothing you know nothing john snow yeah he knows nothing yeah <laughs> and then when it gets to the end of the movie he's like oh he by the, knows nothing yeah but he's like oh by the way <laughs> um i know i've been picking on you for being weird and all that but it turns out that i got some weird stuff going on in my life as well mm. and i honestly believe at the end when blades like do you are you sure you want to touch that I think it's his way of saying, look, I'm sorry, you're a great actor, but you're a crap character. Please don't touch that sword because then you'll be in my movie and then you're going to bring me down. <laughs> Do you, like, I feel like it, his character really didn't get like good up until that bit where he opens up uh, the, the black or he looks at the yeah. black sword. Yeah, and I don't, no real development. And I don't blame the actor, but I just yeah, he yeah. just feels pushed into this. And that's yeah. the thing, like looking at the character, he's more of a supernatural, like, he makes sense in the blade world. He makes sense in all that. So mm. to be like, oh, let's bring him in and he'll just be the random boyfriend. It's like, yeah. but why? They should have had like, he was like implied that he was hiding something. Like he knew something uh, yeah. within at least, at the very least. Yeah. So with the Celestials, like we'll go more into it, but this is my problem right now. It's going with phase four is, again, I think I said this in the last pod. We start off with... Um, Far from home, and it's like okay, secret invasion. That's where we're going with this. It's like okay, good. Mm. And then not long after, no, 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 Loki. It's Kang. Kang's the big bad. He's the next guy. Okay, cool. And then we get here. It's the Celestials, and I, like, oh, where, where are we going with this? And that's what, like I understand. Like you know, in the comic world, there's multiple villains, there's multiple you know elements and different you know aspects of the universe yeah but it was just easier when it was like we know thanos is the big bad we know this is where we're going and what's happening is now we're expanding so much and it's amazing in all the ways we're going but i don't actually know like yes i know it's like, oh it's kang we all think it's kang but are we is it kang like is is kang just going to be one side of the marvel universe and then the other side's going to be the celestials like this yeah this this movie adds like Again, we, we talked about how cool it was they're expanding, but it adds like an aspect that we're not sure we're ready for. Like we're we're like we're not in the mood for this yet because it's just it's too much at once and it's just yeah. like it, the storyline and all was just really convoluted in a sense where it's just like they were retconning a lot of things in. Yeah. You know, the, for the purpose of like again, trying to build up phase four, but it was just like I think with this one they kind of pushed it a bit too far. And, yeah, yeah. Right but then you've even got you've even got like the element Doctor Strange just brought into it as well. Yeah, yeah. Like but we've almost got four. You could actually call or call it almost four big bads or evils happening at the same time. Strange did it like, better though. What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Protecting your reality, douchebag. Yeah, no, no. I'm not saying he did. I'm not saying it's bad. But like you, yeah, like yeah. you're saying, it's just too much going on at one time. We've got. Like we know, secret invasion is coming because that's like the Fury show, and we know Kang is sitting there, and we know the Celestials are in the background, and we've, then we've got this whole horror verse. Yeah, yeah. And they're currently building with Doctor Strange, and then Blade will come into play with it, and, <laughs> and then when Shang Chi and all this, like, yeah, and then there, with and the then all of his, yeah. yeah, then there's all of his like mystical supernatural, yeah. and then you've also got leave all of that big level stuff alone because like. Blade will bring also bring in all the vampires mm. and all of that crap, and they're their own big bads. But then like, you've just got the big bads for people. Yeah, like you've got the terrorist organizations, which was like Falcon and Winter Soldier. Like, yeah, there's so many 
little things happening. At, like this freaking Hydra. Like there's still so much crap sitting there. Yeah, like, but like in the Infinity Saga, like every time there was like a MacGuffin, say it was an Infinity Stone. So even yeah. though like, it always <laughs> went back to Thanos, well, yeah. like yes. I came in t- when he had like um I think it's Fastos, you know, making the rings. Mm-hmm. Me and my yeah. wife were like, oh, that's the so um, ten rings. Like yeah. that's where it yeah, connects. Yeah, 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 but then yeah. later on, it was like it, they never addressed that. So it's like, mm-hmm. do the Eternals have anything to do with that? And yeah, um, there's so much just sitting there. Unless yeah. they, like, unless the each one gets sorted in its own path of the MCU, and yeah. they don't all collect, and they don't really all collide until it is just this one massive. Because hell, they could even bring Galactus and Silver Surfer back in if they wanted to. Because we well, know, they probably will. Because we know the Fantastic Four exists, Doctor and then we know X Men exists. So they've already they've already gotten like Phase Six planned at this point. Yeah, and that's fine, but like. I feel like they're trying to do so much. Maybe they're starting to get worried. Oh, we don't have much time. Like maybe the superior we're genre, losing. yeah, yeah we're phase losing. out. Yeah, it definitely felt like with this. We're already we're already going into the phase three universe building. <laughs> but like, I mean, if I guess if I can try to reconnect it back, like with this, uh, essentially, it feels like you know we're we yeah sure we're excited for them expanding the universe, but now because it's become so much. This movie stresses me out the most because I feel like they're adding in like this huge thing, this huge part of the universe, but like I just can't be bothered. Like I'm not I'm so disinterested in this movie and what it brings that like I, I can't bring myself to figure out more and it kind of stresses me out because you know, we all love the MCU and like what it yeah. brings, but it's just like what the heck. Yeah, leave this to like phase five or phase six <laughs> and sort out what they've brought in for phase four first. I know. Come on. But do you think like, okay, so let's take Batman, for example. We went into Batman. We knew there wasn't going to be laughs. We knew it was going to be a dark tone. It was three hours long. No, I don't know anyone that's complained about it. The well, with this, <laughs> okay, what I, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it uh, felt yeah. long to me. Malika, Lord of the Rings, yeah, yeah. man. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings has not okay. felt long to me once. <laughs> yeah, but it's still, it's a long movie. Oh, yeah, they, they are long. Yeah. I, I don't disagree. They're like four hours long in the extended versions. <laughs> and it's all good. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but I feel like, and that's what I'm trying to say, this film doesn't establish a tone. And like, when I like, I remember when I came out of this movie, I, I wrote you guys, said, 8 out of 10, great movie. That's obviously gone down since. Yeah. But I think that was why I had that initial reaction was I was excited thinking, to me, it's probably the first Marvel movie that went to that extreme of, yeah, we're going to put, put a twist on you. The Eternals are actually the bad guys, or are they the bad guys? Because they're actually doing the right thing by mm. the celestial gods. Mm. So what's our lives and all that? And even the twist with Icarus. And I, I, I love deep thematic stuff. So I was like, yeah, you know what? i got to give this film a good rating because they've gone there. But mm. then when I walked away, I was like, it was so convoluted and and so mixed up in everything else was going on. Mm. Like, and I, I said to Robin, by the end of the movie, I was like, I want all of these characters to die. Not because I hate them, <laughs> because I want to make sure I don't have to sit through this again, because this isn't like Dune or like other high science fiction where yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm sitting through it. Yes. It's, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit slow in bits and it's a bit draining, but there's a point to this and I'm learning something. It's like, I'm sitting and I'm like, oh, this is, this is doing yeah. my head. <laughs> there's, been, there's been no connections to Eternals yeah. in any other movies or TV shows, and we haven't seen any further connections or anything after that. Like, we we don't even know. Like, everything we've heard for new TV shows, new movies, mm. nothing seems to be connecting back to the Eternals. No. Which is like everything is connect. Everything's going on the other big bads that we've heard about, or it's its own thing completely, like yeah. She Hulk and all of that. Like that's we have no idea how that's connecting. Yeah, yeah. Which becomes a bit of a problem in itself because again, it's like do we do we should we still care about this movie if they're not mm-hmm. making those obvious connections uh, to get excited for like they did as David said with the Infinity Stone. Yeah, like yeah, 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 and like. They finally brought back Incredible Hulk, and that was a movie that was ignored for a long time. Mm. And now they're bringing those characters back. But I can't say, like, there was talk of them bringing in, um, I think, I think um, 
his name is Kingo in the movie, the um, the Bollywood actor in the film. Yeah, well, yeah his, his yeah. character's a Bollywood actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were talking about bringing him into Moon Knight, which I don't think would have made sense. But like that's, mm. but that's it. Like, yeah. But like, if I, I, I don't think there's any characters in this film that like, I'm excited to see you again. Mm. Like, because yeah. Cut. Okay, everyone, that was good. What we can do ten percent better. That was beautiful. Very, very good. Anyway, the only one I'm excited to see we don't actually see would hear his voice. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Blade. Blade. Yeah. Blade. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all for our phase one likes, dislikes, first impressions? Yeah, I think, I think we talked about all the phases pretty much. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah, see you, buddy. Six out of ten. All right. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> uh, we'll cut into phase two, our cast impressions. No. How could you be worthy? Just uh, essentially standouts. I, th- I think we'll end up talking about the Eternals, essentially. But mm. uh, essentially good and bad. Um, was there anyone... I feel like we should start with Jurik since we have Nick's opinions on him, right? Jurik sucks. He does suck. I personally, I remember when I first watched it, I was like, oh, this guy's pretty cool. Like, I, I, the mind control thing was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I also liked his, I, I guess he's like, um, again, he was the first one to me that stood out with what his opinion was or what he felt was the right way to go about things like, uh, when when they had that scene, was it Babylon where there was like a big war and yeah, where Babylon. Athena kind of like gets uh, mad weary or whatever? No, I think that's actually in South no, America. That, yes, that is when the actually yeah. yes, the, when the Spanish are invading. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that bit, I was just like, okay, this is where it kind of picked up for me. But what I didn't get on the rewatch was because he like I think. The conversation they have is like in regards to free will. I, I actually I think this is pretty good in of itself because it, it it's like it talks about conflict and whether or not their views are actually right. But he's like he's of the view that uh, they have these powers and they should be free to do what they want with them and help. But his power is ironically taking free will away from people. Yeah. But then again, his view is that he's doing it to help them. He's doing it for the betterment of them. So. Like, I like that conflict with him. It is a bit confusing, though. Um, but I will say, after seeing him as the Joker, I prefer him as Jury. So, <laughs> to me, that for me, that scene, yeah, like what you're saying, so like the you're removing their free will, like it's a their free will is to fight, like that's humans, but like making them not fight is removing their free will. And it's it, for me, that sort of went against everything that the Eternals do. And it's like, why would, like, and I don't like, I know this is purely for the movie, but they'd been around for like 6,000 years already. Like, there were a hell of a lot worse battles and wars fought than that one. Like, for that to have been the breaking point for him, like, for me, it was just stupid. Like, if he was going to break from that, it would have been like 3,000 years ago. Yeah. Like, before that. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. But then it's funny that, like, his thing is mind control and the free will and that, and then the Eternals realise, like, that's their big dilemma as well, that do they have free will? Or is everything just, like, pre-planned by the Celestials, that they're just going along in this never-ending wheel of going, killing, being reborn? Like, a Celestial gets born, new worlds are created, Eternals go to those worlds, kill the Divergence, etc., etc., it's just one massive wheel, pretty much, for them. But yeah, like I get, like I sort of get why his character did it, but at the same time, it was a, if you were going to do it, you would have done it 3,000 years ago. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just the timing of it is what annoyed me. And then the fact that the other Eternals didn't really try and, like, stop him, or like if that was the first conflict that ever got to them that point as mm-hmm. well, was a bit weird. Like, if he felt that strongly, you'd think they would have broken up a long time before that. Yeah. I mean, it, it did come about when they were about to uh, wipe um, 
Athena's memory because she yeah. had really. Yeah. But um, yeah. Now you got a point. Like, why? Why only then? Why is it only when something? I mean, I mean, in general, like it, it is like that in general. Like, whenever something bad happens, like that's only when we respond to things. Yeah. But for guys who've been around for millennia, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does raise quite a few questions. Yeah. Uh, Chris should have just killed him then. <laughs> and then himself. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, the fly, the flying in the sun was a bit a bit on the nose. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked awesome. Like, don't get me wrong, that scene actually looked pretty cool. But it yeah. was very on the nose of the Icarus flying into the sun. Yeah. I, I mean, that was intended though, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't think they should have killed him off. Like, I know there's the thing in, like, this is the hard thing where we are right now in, like, creativity in Hollywood where it's like, if someone's done something unforgivable, then we need to get him off ASAP. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I don't know. I can't think of this. Like, there was a movie recently was a character. Oh, yeah, like um, Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, is it U.S. Agent? Is that his name? I can't, John yeah. Walker. Yeah, Walker. Yeah, around. like everyone being like, oh, he should have died because what he did was unforgivable. And I'm not denying that. It's just, I just don't see, it's not very, like, for character development-wise, if it's just, oh, I screwed up, I'm now going to go kill myself. It's like, well, what was the point of your character then, if that mm. makes sense? I, I mean, I kind of liked Icarus in a sense because... Again, because everyone had their own individual point of view, I liked him as <clears throat> the loyal character who who was keeping to what the Celestials intended. Yeah, I liked him for that, but I think what took away a lot from his character was the relationships he had with each and every one of the Eternals. Yeah, uh, I agree. To a degree, especially obviously Cersei. Yeah, um, that took away a lot, and then Sprite made him a bit annoying, and then. Yeah, Sprite I don't know. was sort of annoying sometimes on her own part. She was yeah. annoying in general. Yeah, like, that's she was, what I'm saying. She, like, she, she was a yeah. bit annoying in general in the movie. We get to start over somewhere new. Well, that was very moving. Jerry. But she wasn't like the funny kid. She no. wasn't the serious kid. She was just the irritating kid. <laughs> She was like she was like this emo seven thousand year old. Yeah, every time she talked, it was just oh, she annoyed me more than Reva. <laughs> and Leia. <laughs> no, Leia was actually good. Yeah, I'll give it Leia. That. <laughs> but yeah, I, but I see what, like I see what you mean, Zeta. Like each of the Eternals, but that's the thing. Like it's. There is no right or wrong for the Eternals. Mm. Like, oh, so, so what I mean is, like, their views, neither of them were right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's all they know. Like, mm. they just, and it's literally all they know because their memory gets wiped. Mm. And so to him, he's not even, like, he's being, yes, the loyal, doing exactly what's right. And then he's also seen their previous leader do it for thousands of years as well. Mm. And so he's like, well, what's the point of rebelling? Like, she's kept us safe, she's kept us alive. Mm. Like, we've gone through and we've done everything right, we've kept humans alive, we've protected them, so mm. why not? Like, what are we doing wrong? Are you talking about the way, like, the reason why Icarus is still, like, no, we got to um, we got to do what Arishim is telling us to do? Is that what you're talking about? Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, why he goes against pretty much all of them. Yeah, but he goes against the leader. Um, because when you said she, are you talking about um Salma Hayek's character? Yeah, AJ. Yeah. yeah, but he goes against her. It's not out of loyalty to her. It's out of loyalty mm, to the Celestials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I think. Wow. Yeah, I think yeah. it's super interesting because, like, again, he's arguably the most powerful out of all of them. Oh, easily. Mm. Yeah, but he's still there's also still a slight insecurity within him because he wants to. I don't know. He, he, like, they did hint at him wanting to be leader in a sense of things because he mm-hmm. felt strongly about following Arisham. But at the <laughs> at the same time, it's like it seemed like he didn't really have his own view. He was still following what Arisham wanted them yeah. to do or what they were intended to do. Who do you think is going to lead the Avengers? I could lead them. I figured I'd be good at that. Yeah, you would. 
AJ didn't even choose you to lead us. Whoa! Ouch! Yeah. Ouch. Hard. I'm going to let that one slide because, you know, you've always been better that I can fly and you can't. Oh, so much you can fly. His own view is that he didn't kill them all. He could. Yeah, yeah he could. And he's definitely that's strong what, enough. I mean, Her was, Homelander right. does it a lot better, so... <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Imagine if they kept him alive and he went away, had to deal with his guilt and work out, well, where do, what, what is my journey now? What's my journey back to redemption? I don't know. <laughs> For some reason, I just imagine him just still flying around the sun. <laughs> He's just like, he, like, he doesn't go quite far enough. <laughs> he just keeps flying. It's like I'm um, Superman, where like you just see his face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he realizes um, he's gotten it all wrong this time, and he's actually just powering up as he flies around. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, there was a lot of with this cast like people being underused i think fitz already talked about the guy who played kino but i I remember an interview and him like one of the things he was hyping up as well other than his like awesome role in this and how he's bragging to his parents that he was in the mcu was the fact that he buffed up as well he didn't buff up for the mcu (laughs) yeah yeah but yeah again they didn't really showcase anything that he had uh his powers were cool though like the he's like um, he's like i'm neutral see (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bollywood movie. He's like, but I just got, I'm so bad. And you know what was really funny? I know him from before. And all of a sudden he showed up and he was like, hot. Yeah. My <laughs> God, the body. Like, wow. He was walking different, moving different. And, and I'm like, but you're a goofball. What happened to you? I want, I want those muscles. I'm like, let me touch it. They're still there, by the way. But like yeah, but... He's, he's supposed to be funny, right? Like I even thought he wasn't as funny as I, I feel like he could be. But I feel like again, like same thing with Obi Wan. They hype him up that like we're bringing him in, and it's like, okay, let's see what you're gonna do. And it's like we're not giving him much of a role, yeah. and it's like, yeah. why do you keep like? <laughs> but also, <laughs> even with him being buff, it's the same thing happened with J.K. Simmons as Jim Gordon in the Justice League, right. where after they announced he was Jim Gordon, they took a photo of him doing a deadlift, and the guy was shredded, like from <laughs> oh. And then, like, we never saw it. And now I'm just starting to wonder if they just go to the gym and just take photos of them. And it's like, this is what they're going to look like. And, like, nah, this is just me in my everyday life. I'm not going to look like this in the movie. <laughs> yeah. And then Fitz mentioned before we did this pod some while ago, like, how you get in actors like Salma Hayek and yeah. Angelina Jolie, but you didn't really use them to their full potential as you could have because these are strong female characters. And maybe they were trying to make room for Cersei's, the actress who plays Cersei. Um, but anyways, just on them two first, I, I think you could have done more with them. I, th- I mean, I, I, I reckon they, I, I think they played their roles well, but they were limited by the movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree you with can, that. You can't fault, you can't fault Angel, um, Jolie's acting or Selma. I don't yeah, think you can fault any of the acting. Well. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, right. it's the movie. Like, Kit yeah. Arrington does a great job. Rob Stark does a great job. Mm. Like, they all do a really good job acting. Mm. It's just... But I, I like with, limited. with Angel, uh, with Thena, her character, because Angelina Jolie is usually portrayed as someone who's strong and powerful. Mm. In this, she was, but then they showed, like, that vulnerable sense because of her mad, weary condition and how, you know, she was, like, vulnerable and kind of guarded and isolated. To a degree, but then again, because that's how char- her character was, they limited her role in a sense. To help you. What if it happens again? She could have killed you. She could have killed all of us. Please. Please, I, I want to remember. I want to remember my life. Then I love you, but listen to me. It's not important if you remember. Your spirit will remain. You will always be thin at deep inside. Try- yeah, but like a lot of people championed this movie by saying how great it was that Angelina Jolie didn't like she was a background character. Mm-hmm. But like I watched the movie today. Um, I think it's called Those Who Wish Me Dead, and it's it's sort of it's she's the main person, but um, it's an all sort of an ensemble. Yeah. But like she's a she's great as a main, and I'm not saying like mm-hmm. she should have been Cersei, but. She shouldn't have been just this background person because, you know, she has yeah. to kind of play like a silent role in the film and that it kind of takes away from her interacting. And mm. I was actually invested in her and Gilgamesh's relationship. That's why when they mm. killed Gilgamesh, I was like, yeah. why out of all of the all of them, why Gilgamesh? And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they were 
the two of them, <clears throat> I agree with you, were my only, like, as far as characters go, um, together, I reckon they were the best. Because there wasn't this, like, they didn't have to imply, like, a romance or anything, like, no. or, like, force right. one in. But yeah. also, it was just, like, a genuine care for one another. And they kind of complemented with each other, in a sense. And, yeah, I was invested in their storyline. But, again, they they killed him off and... Oh, they didn't kill her off. Yeah, no. Nah. But, yeah. again, they were limited as individuals and then further limited for what they could have done together because of everything else that was just happening in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, about Cersei... I like Gemma Chan, like in other films. Mm. I think she was miscast as Cersei because I think uh, Cersei is supposed to be this, the way they describe it is empathetic, emo sort of very, um, not emotional, very connected with emotions <laughs> in regards to people. Mm. Gemma Chan didn't pull that off in this film. And it's not her acting. I just think she was miscast in the role. Because, which is interesting because she had a very small part in Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you guys liked it, but I, I like. I, I was okay. invested in her storyline in that movie. And yeah. I was just like, I want to see more of her and what she can do. Yeah. It's just a shame in this one because, yeah, she's usually, she fit that cool, calm, collected type of character. But that's but, not what they were going for for Cersei. You could yeah. tell they were trying something very different. Yeah. I did get the aspects of empathy, but it felt forced. I felt it was more just facial, like her re having to react and mm. like she just couldn't pull that off yeah. in this. I don't know. But, um, yeah, but it's even like the whole love triangle between her and Dane, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. like again, didn't relate. It's not even just the fact it was a love triangle. I just didn't believe that she loved either of them. Is it because <laughs> it's Game of Thrones? Like they just wanted to like, it's it's him versus him, Jon Snow versus Rob Stark. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Maybe yeah. next time I see you, you'll be all in black. It was always my color. Farewell, Snow. And you, Stark. Yeah. But, but even that, we were pumped that there were Game of Thrones actors in this yeah. film. And mm -hmm. again, it's not that they were bad. It's just they weren't utilized. Yeah. The same way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people really like Karun, the cameraman, <laughs> because he was fun. Did you guys oh, like yeah, him? Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't mind him. King I liked it because he was the only humor in the whole film. Yeah, and... yeah. yeah. Uh, I was. I thought it was pretty funny. He was a standout for that. Like it was but, good relief. But then they had that bit when he turns around and starts talking in um, Hindi to all of them, yeah. and it's supposed to be this real emotional scene. But I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't connect this. You've been the funny guy this whole film, and now <laughs> you're like, thank you for all that you've done for us. I'm like, you just met these guys. Let me. <laughs> I mean, I get they were trying to go for, like, he's the human representative in that scene, but because he'd been comedic relief the whole time, it's just like, yeah, you were saying, like, there were just tones that they try to put on certain characters in certain scenes that just didn't fit. Well, yeah. imagine if Trevor Slattery did that. It wouldn't work, you know? <laughs> and, like, they still were able to have a emotional scenes with Trevor Slattery, but in a comedic way that it worked. Yeah, they should have done what they did in Shang-Chi, where it was like he was serious, but everything he was talking yeah. about was a joke, like, in regards to that Planet of the Apes. Uh, um, was apes actually rode the horses? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not... Is there anyone else? Any, Casting-wise? Um, Fastos. Oh, Fastos, yeah. Um, oh, Fastos. I thought he was cool. I mean, uh, I, I think, again, because there was just so many characters with different opinions, yeah. um, it made things hard. Uh, but because uh, I, I just remember, he, he was in Godzilla vs. Kong, right? He's in um, a show called Atlanta, and he's really good in that show. Right. But then he's one of those actors they've taken from a really good show and put in movies, but he just he doesn't really get to show his acting ability because it's all like well there's not much he can do in Godzilla vs. Kong. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. And <laughs> he was a and, joke in that movie. Yeah. And <laughs> even in this yeah. yeah. And even in this, like I I when he came on, but by that point, again, it's like you it's like when you've eaten so much that when someone's like Look, I got a really awesome slice of pizza. You're like, dude, I, I've just eaten so much crap. It wasn't even good, 
but I'm so full I can't even eat that slice of pizza. Well, back to the food <laughs> references. I love it. Yeah. Uh, That's it. Like when he came on, it was like this whole film has been introducing characters. I'm done. And then even when they try to do, I don't know, maybe it's just how, how I am. I'm not as keen on historical fiction as much as I used to be. So when they were like, oh, he was the reason behind um, Oppenheimer, um, yeah. the atomic bomb. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't yeah. mind when it's like it's how it's stark because that makes a bit more sense. But when mm. it's like, I invented the atomic bomb and I'm standing in the middle of a wasteland. I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I didn't, going. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> yeah. Really feel that either. <laughs> and I didn't mind the f- family dynamic he added, but again, yeah. it was just too late in the movie where you'd had just like everything that was happening. Okay. Usually those scenes are meant to like kind of slow things down a bit, but it's really slow. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know or what, like you, you know just what had it tried to do. Yeah. You know, actually what recipe I actually just remembered it was trying to do. It Which was one? trying to do Snyder Cut. Well, like how so? So Snyder Cut, so original Justice League, they they sort of missed a lot of those origin stories for the characters. Yeah. Where Snyder Cut, they brought in and you saw the bit of Aquaman in there, you saw the bit of Wonder Woman, you saw the bit of Flash. Everyone got their own little screen time yeah, yeah. before everyone came together. And that movie is like three, three and a half hours or whatever it is. Mm. It's like they tried to do this in they tried to do it in Eternals, but the movie was already so goddamn slow at that point, and we'd already seen backstory for them. We didn't need to see like so they just sort of put in everyone's little story of where they were now, and it just stretched that midsection of the movie so much, but, like it just completely put the movie into a trough. Yeah, yeah. but even with Justice, like you have like you're invested in Batman, you're invested in Wonder Woman, so. You have but them, that's, but that's because we'd seen movies before. Yeah, but I'm saying with this one, we knew none of them, so like, we didn't even have people that we could go. Okay, we know none of these yeah. characters, but I, I trust that character that yeah. to take me on this journey with these other characters. Because that's what the basically journey. the Avengers was. Yeah, like yeah. But Guardians but yeah. did it so well, though, which is why I still thought this had a chance because yeah, the true. Guardians didn't do that. Mm. Guardians had everyone together pretty quickly. Yeah. They really only showed they weren't split. There was the no origin story. Yeah. yeah, the only real origin story was Star Lord. Mm. Yeah, everyone else was. Everyone else talked about. So Drax, you know why he's there just from talking. You know why Rocket is there from that emotional scene. Like mm. it's, you figure out why everyone else is there just from casual dialogue between the characters. There was no reason to, oh, let's go put ten minutes for a bit of Raccoon story, ten minutes for a bit of Drax, mm. ten but- minutes over there. Star Lord's our entrance into that movie. Who is who's our entrance into this movie? <laughs> True. <Trimpling. laughs> All of them. Yeah, the that's what I'm saying. Themselves. You don't even have one character that stands Correct. out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they I think that's what they tried to do in Fur Eternals. It was give them all a little bit of their own screen time. But then it takes away from what those actors and actresses are capable of doing. Like yeah. if the Eternals was maybe four instead of six or three, I think that would have been Yeah, I agree easier but because it's six characters and they're trying to show story for all of them then yeah i think that's why it just slowed down and isn't that memorable but even like stuff like example in the trailer where you see um salma hayek on a farm and i was like oh this is going to be cool like you know go for a bit of that country vibe and it's like why is she on a farm just (laughs) cause just staying with hawkeye yeah why why are they in london just cause why is he a Bollywood actor? Just cause, like, well, it's just, Indian. yeah. <laughs> Why was Salma? Because she she had a love for humans, and she was so isolated away from everyone. It didn't. We know it. she loved humans because it's yeah. just like you were saying before about like motivation, mm. but that's it. Like the only motivation for thousands of years was we love these people. Like that's. <laughs> And Disney uses love, like they do it in styles as well, where they're like, oh, we're going to win by love, not hate. Mm. And it's like, these are slogans. They don't mean anything. It's like, like the power <laughs> of friendship in anime. Yeah. <laughs> At least anime has an excuse. <laughs> yeah. <It's> Japanese. Uh, <laughs> it empowers them, though. Crazily. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Do you reckon, do you reckon like this could have, uh, obviously, Justice, uh, DCEU didn't do it perfectly, but. Kind of like if you split it into two where uh, you had part of the group come together and then they work on getting the rest or should have, oh, should they have oh. just had them all once earlier or sooner? Not the I, way out. I don't know. I reckon... Like how could I, you split it into two? 
I don't think you could. No. But I honestly reckon this, like, I honestly reckon this would have been a cooler movie if it had taken the Marvel, sorry, the um, Captain Marvel um, way of doing things and they'd kept it in the past. Like, I feel like Ancient Eternals would have been way cooler than modern day Eternals. Ah, oh, keep it in a certain time frame, right? Yeah. But a lot of people don't respond. Like, I love ancient stuff. I love, but the the frame we are in now, not many people respond as well to that sort of thing. Yeah. So, and they want to see it and because it's MCU. They want to see it in the MCU time yeah. again somehow. Yeah. But I do think it would have been cool. Yeah. Like, if it had occurred back then and then it, that had impacted some of the events being back then and staying like a thousand BC or 500 BC or whatever yeah. it is. I don't know. I reckon that would be a cool eternal story. Well, like even like with Babylon and that, like going off what you're saying, like if the Eternals actually played a role in actually creating Babylon and being part of the politics and mm. that sort of thing, it would have been more interesting to me, but it's just aesthetic. It's like, yeah, yeah. We, we're in Babylon. Who knows why? Yeah. But <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They didn't go to ancient Egypt, did they? Nah, that's Moon Knight. I don't remember. <laughs> Disappointing. Uh, Disappointing. Um, I'm, I'm going to take it down to Marcus for that. We forgot um, the Deviants. <laughs> I just didn't believe he was a green alien. <laughs> no, no. I, just... <laughs> I would have liked too much CGI on him. Yeah. He, I would have liked him if he was a clown like an it, but. <laughs> Hi, Georgie. Please. <laughs> Again, you had someone like Skarsgård underutilized. Mm. Yeah. But the way, um, the way yeah. that Davian dies is a bit quick. I was like, oh. Oh, against okay. Thena. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. All right. But he gets quickly sidelined too. And actually, they had an yeah. interesting thing with him where it's like, we are the same. We're being manipulated by the Celestials. 100%. Yeah. yeah like they had a bit, but it was like, Oh no, we don't have time for you anymore. Uh, go mm. fight Angelia Jolie. You know, it's yeah. just die in about three seconds. It was yeah. like an aspect. It was very, very interesting story uh, in regards to being a reflection of the Eternals, but also like the whole thing about it evolving as it goes on. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think that was like another theme within the movie, in of itself. That, that almost could have been like you were saying. So if there were, if there was like an Eternals B part B or something. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he could have been one of the villains, like a super evolved deviant could have been one villain with this celestial then being the overarching mm. final boss. If you it is a shame because they were a problem in this movie. Like they were really strong. They were giving Icarus troubles. And that scene where they uh, invade where Druig is uh, having that, like that commune or whatever it is, that was pretty cool. I mean, when they attack and all that. I love it when um, Icarus. Like he's next to um, Angelina Jolie, and then her eyes go wide. He's like, like <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Terrible timing, Thina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, the subtle parts like that were yeah. the funny parts. Like, that's all you needed. You didn't. Yeah. Need, uh, he's, like, he's got Stormtrooper aim at one point. <laughs> <laughs> you just. People with laser eyes, I don't know. Sometimes they're just very hit on this. <laughs> It's like, bro, you're literally looking at it. Your lasers are going where you're looking. How are you missing? <laughs> yeah. Also, that comment that um, Kingo makes, about, I think it's Kingo, makes about Thor. It was so weird. It didn't make any sense. Like, he used yeah. to hang out with Thor or something. Yeah. When he was a kid. Mm. He knew Thor when he was a kid. He used to follow me around or something like that. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Odin, Thor used to follow me around when he was a little kid. Now he's a famous Avenger and won't return my calls. But they're only a few, like, they're only 7,000 years old. Asgard's been there for God knows how long. They were trying to... Imp <laughs> no, haven't the Eternals been there since the beginning? Of Earth? Wait, since well, of Earth? Beginning of Earth? Uh, aren't they Celestials. a few thousand years old? Celestials, yeah. I'm, talking, I'm thinking of Celestials. <laughs> yeah, the Eternals are only a few thousand. They start with humans, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um... But yeah, yeah, he makes that comment. I think mm. the implication is that because they're like gods type thing yeah. they're trying to they're trying to make them seem like this is how powerful these guys are but kingo was on earth and mm. thor was in asgard when he was a baby yeah, like, so they, they, they even know about the other realms yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they only know earth how would they have met? was he just saying that <laughs> yeah i should just <laughs> unless love and thunder are 
retcon something in. You know that scene in the trailer where you got um, Thor yeah, is looking kid. running? Yeah, yeah. It's Kingo <laughs> running after him. Like, <laughs> I'm going to kick you. <laughs> the, the, um, <laughs> if they do that, I was just like, I didn't really need it, but it's kind of funny. Yeah. yeah, it would be pretty funny. I hope someone, I hope someone photoshops that in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and even um, what's her name? Is it Akari? Uh, Makari? Makari. The... Yeah. Oh yeah, we didn't oh, really talk about her. But that's it. Like everyone goes on, oh, she's the first deaf superhero. Mm. They literally don't even give her a backstory. By the time they get to her, it's like, oh, we've gone through everyone. We don't have time. She's just hanging out in the old where they used to. What was it, the spaceship? Yeah. Yeah. That was like, horrible. Hello. Yeah. I feel like that was done very poorly and yeah. she was done dirty. Like she was there the whole time. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you... And like I get like uh they're introducing, you know, the first dev character, but they didn't use her. They just put her in a spaceship. They just locked yeah. her in there. Like what? Yeah, it was they really it was... confined her in the storyline. Yeah, it's, it's like you, it's like you said, Fitz, they got like ninety minutes into the movie and they went that uh, crap we don't have enough time to show another story yeah that was cool i mean the way she took on icarus that was pretty cool yeah and i didn't mind that king guy was in the last fight it just felt weird it was it didn't feel it made sense in story because mm. like the fight's going like wait where's king guy and it's like oh that's right um he told he's, them he yeah, couldn't be involved yeah but it just it disappeared <laughs> they could have done that better as well it took yeah. away like it was a good like it was an interesting thing because you know they were, they were making the point of his point of view of things the neutral yeah. the neutral character but like to literally not put him in the fight they could have just like he was in the fight and then he just decides to like pull back or something i don't know or even just have a scene of him walking away and just yeah, looking yeah. back at them like just establish yeah, yeah. Oh, seeing them fight and then just like yeah, yeah. yeah. It just feels like if like one of us just dropped off the Zoom call right now, and it's like <laughs> that's um, how it felt. <laughs> <goodbye>. <laughs> yeah. any, any more thoughts on cast or I guess other I, things? I think the I think the I think pretty much what we've established is great cast, mm. just very underutilized. Yeah. Well, that that was one of the things that hyped a lot of people up is the cast. Yeah. At least. Was you had yeah you had Sam like the big names Sam Hayek Angelina Jolie, um, Richard Madden, Madden. Um, yeah. John Snow or Kit Harrington, and like <laughs> the Indian dude like you had a few people like a few actors and actors that we'd seen in very recent movies and TV shows where they killed it, mm. and like then you had the old schools like Sam Hayek and Angelina Jolie but all the newer ones were killing it in their TV shows and movies. And so, like, sweet, this cast is going to be sick, you know. Mm. They've all got their own powers, all individuals, blah, blah. Mm. Then the, the movie under, like, it underperformed. And yeah. so it just sort of overshadowed what they could have done. Do you think it's because, like, the mo- they had to establish that Eternals were not human, so they had to have a sense of an alienation about them? Because I'm thinking about, like, Salma Hayek. Like, she feels very reserved in her role. But, like, I think about, like, what I like her in, and I like her in stuff like Hitman's Bodyguard, which sounds stupid, but where she's just really just going for it and not really, like, energetic and very excited. Well, Dom with her with Penelope Cruz. Bendidos. Mm. Yeah. I, right. in you in that. <laughs> I know my movies. <laughs> it's actually a pretty funny movie. Yeah, yeah. It is <laughs> funny, actually, good. yeah. But that's it. Like, I guess and I remember there's an int- – I think um, Richard Madden said – when he did Icarus, he didn't want to come off like he was indifferent. Mm-hmm. He wanted to actually, but it was so, I reckon it's so hard to play a character that's so reserved emotionally mm. and yet not come off like you're indifferent or act, come off like you're not acting. So mm. maybe if the film gave that space, I don't know. But yeah. yeah. I mean, it did feel like they were, because they created beings that are essentially robots. And they are trying to fit in, but like because they're they're pro they're they're meant to be programmed to work a certain way, but like it's I don't know, it's still I don't know, it's a lot to process. Do you think Thor is similar in the sense of like with the Asgardians? If like I know a lot of people don't like it, the way Thor's gone, but the whole would have it worked if he stayed Shakespearean? If the Asgardians stayed Shakespearean, is it a similar thing with this where it's like? Yes, the characterization makes sense for the species, but in the course of the MCU, 
there's only so far you can take it. I think because I'm on board with how Thor's gone, I don't mind it. Because like then if you just stay, because I didn't really like that in the first, yeah, the first Thor. Yeah. yeah. If you keep mm. to it, then where's the development? Because yeah. Thor spent so much time on Earth, uh, it makes sense for him to change to a degree. Yeah. I yeah. mean, maybe he stays a bit more as Guardian ish. Uh, but as for the Eternals, yeah. Uh, no, but you can see with the Eternals, you can see the ones that have spent more time with humanity. Yeah, yeah. Acted differently than the ones that didn't. Yeah, true. Yeah. No, yeah. But then yeah. again, it's also like even their powers, like some of them have very similar powers to other superheroes or like not even or like other comic characters. Like, and then there's only so much like Icarus. He's, he's a Superman. He's a Homelander. Yeah. Like there's, so many characters it's like how can you differentiate yourself from those characters without going completely left field yeah and like when you're essentially an mcu superman like again, yeah again potentially because it's such a huge amount of years like because they're eternals mm. uh we and, and we don't see much change in their characters then yeah maybe like that's, we've that's already said this but again like if you play a character like icarus we're like all right i've got to act like I'm taking a back a, a back um, seat, and I'm just not getting, being involved because I don't agree with what's going on. It in like with ten characters, it's easy to get lost in the crowd. So mm-hmm. your performance, like, yeah, like probably when I think about it, all the performances and all like all the storylines, it's hard to just keep track of each one yeah. to the point that it just becomes that mess where you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Avengers needed like seven movies to get it right. Yeah, and they tried. Yeah, that's true. This is yeah. Marvel. I think this was Marvel being like, we can do anything. And then they realized, like Icarus, they got too close to the sun. But it, it was also <laughs> Marvel realizing they've run out of time to do another massive group with everyone having their own movies. Mm. Like they've gone beyond that stage. Like they can no longer do that. They won't hold the audience for another 10 years. Yeah. Like but Eternals is very niche, as in, like, honestly, before I, this movie came out, like, when they announced this movie, I didn't mm. know what, who the Eternals were. So, like, I they I, never... I would like, heard of them from a comic book, but I've never yeah. read anything into them. So they never... Yeah, so they never really had to go for the Eternals. So the question is, why did they pick the Eternals? Yeah. You is, know, it, I, is it Feige with some major scheme that everyone has no idea about? Yeah. Like, will, will, will they literally play a bigger part in Phase 5? Yeah. Five? Uh, yeah and like i said before like within humans that failed but do i want black Bolt back a hundred percent but again there's none of these guys that i'm like yes i really want them back <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i think fortunately now the mcu has the benefit of the doubt like you know they're going to do something with it mm. or at the end of you the just day don't know when yeah but like throughout each phase there's always a, a movie that's like the bot like a bomb in a sense like yeah. it's just like but they've all been enjoyable like if i think about all the others i'm like yeah i didn't like that as much as... really okay let's see what you got dark, dark world i did not enjoy <laughs> oh really? the i still had fun me, in it the yeah. two for me are guardians two and iron man three to be honest okay yeah, think... the other ones i would that's the other ones i don't enjoy at it does all. it does vary for me because i say i don't like but then when they they had that scene where they returned to the dark world in Endgame, it's just like, oh, this movie's kind of redeemable. But I feel like with those movies, I can put them on the background and be like, oh, that's a funny bit. Oh, that's right. a funny bit. This one, if I put it on the background, it's like, mm. oh, but <laughs> that's the, the vibe of the house has just gone. Down. <laughs> when I did watch it again, I felt like, oh yeah, I'm kind of like, because yeah, I messaged the group straight away. I was just like, oh, I don't mind the turtles right now. Mm-hmm. But then yeah, it just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, the two, yeah, the two for me in that category are Iron Man three and Guardians two. Right, right. Thor two is it, it sort of just pulls itself out of that soundtrack. <laughs> to me, Thor two is an episode of a cartoon. It might not be the best episode, but it's uh, still an episode. Hmm. Well, well yeah. it, in, it has another stones, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it has, yeah, the, yeah. has the ether, yeah. So it sort of has to be there. Like it's not yeah. even filler. It's just there. Yeah. Maybe that's why, because <laughs> you're forced to, because there's such a vital part of the Infinity Saga in it. You have to keep watching it. <laughs> yeah. With Thor 2, you can, uh, sorry, Guardians 2, you can pretty much eliminate. 
like Iron Man 3 you could almost eliminate as well. Like this... If Iron elim- Man didn't mean so much, yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah but Eternals too. so far we can eliminate because we haven't seen a tie into anything else. I feel even, more that um, way about Iron Man 2 than 3, though. Yeah. But Actually, even, yes, yeah, Iron Man sorry. 2 didn't do much. Sorry, Fitz. No, I keep going, yeah. Except, wait, is Iron Man 2 where they changed Rhodey? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's why you need to watch it, to see why Rhodey's changed. <laughs> but I was going to say, like, even though with Iron Man 3, like, I, I honestly, if they pull back old Jewish Kelly and actually did something cool with him, I actually would be on board with it. Like, that's mm. not fire-breathing. Like, I still think those movies have enough gold that you can mine out of them, even um, though they were subpar. The Mandarin thing killed it for me. Yeah, but they brought it back in Shang Chi. Yeah, yeah, I know, but like as a standalone, like that's that is what turned me off that movie completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I guess in hindsight, we're going off. Just yeah, we're go away. <laughs> <laughs> Mad segue. All I'll say is, in hindsight, the way they've done the Mandarin and all that, I think I think the Mandarin would not would have been limiting as an Iron Man villain, and it worked out so well as a Shang Chi villain. Yeah, so even though at true. the time. Well, I was on with you, like, yeah, at the time, it's not the best twist, but in yeah. hindsight, I think it's worked out. Anyway. Yeah, because yeah. of the, the mystical. Iron yeah. Man that shouldn't be versing mystical. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's without other people. Yeah. yeah. All right, I think it's a good opportunity to get to the next segment. <laughs> <laughs> the Grateful Universe. Phase three, which is where we geek out. Uh, any Easter eggs or parts of this universe that we actually like thought was cool or want to talk about uh, in it? I know we have kind of ripped on it for the most part, but like, is there anything? <laughs> like, I, I was excited again for the introduction of Celestials and like the implication that there's these big giant beings like in the background. Uh, and then again, I, I actually like when they mentioned Thanos being the one that kind of uh, slowed down the progress of the, the celestial being born because he, because he snapped half of humanity, he couldn't oh. draw on that. I was just like, oh, that was pretty cool. Five years ago, Thanos erased half of the population of the universe. The lady emerges. But the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. <laughs> But, like, I mean, again, it's, like, the problem with this movie is, like, it's a bit of a reach on these things. Um, but I still, yeah. um, you said before, I don't know if you were saying that um, the reason why the Tenors didn't help out in the Infinity Saga wasn't a great excuse. But I feel like them wanting to actually kill humanity is a good excuse. Mm. <laughs> yeah, true. No, but like they, but they weren't aware of that, right? But she, she wasn't aware that they were gonna. Yeah, but didn't she say the Celestials had told them not to interfere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it would make sense for me. I guess it, like you could say, oh, why didn't they rebel? Mm. But I guess it makes sense for me, like why the Celestials would be like, don't interfere because mm. we don't. We're not actually wanting these guys alive. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah, um, well, potentially because it was a mess of a movie. Uh, but yeah, yeah. That, like that, that does track. And also, they did address the, the parts like, surely after all those years, someone would want to do something. And Druid did to a degree do yeah. something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they were definitely, they stayed in the background for quite a bit of it. Well, there's the other side of like, with Thanos snapping them, it delays the next Celestial coming, I guess. Doesn't yeah. It? Yeah. So... yeah that's, that's what I was saying. I actually kind of. Thought that was cool. That was a cool. No, but I'm saying then that would make sense for the Eternals to intervene. All oh, right. Like, oh, yeah, so... to not to, to stop Thanos. Yeah. yeah. Unless they, uh, I don't know. Did they know that the Avengers were going to bring it back somehow? I don't know. <laughs> oh. Well, I thought the Celestials were dead. I thought in Guardians they implied that they all died. Right. I don't know. I thought it was just that some were had already died but there was still some around yeah probably because i saw that celestial head the head yeah yeah, yeah. yeah Nowhere, like, oh, whatever it was they're all dead yeah yeah <laughs> um oh, i was gonna say why were there dc references in this like very specific oh yeah ones like uh he refers to alfred 
Batman's butler as Karim, yeah. and then Superman being Clark Kent. Who the hell are you? I'm Karun, Kingo's valet. Oh, valet, like Alfred in Batman. Gilgamesh. Jack, that's Superman. Uh, Jack, that's Superman. Jack, that's really funny, Jack. No, that is no, definitely not he Superman. He is Superman. I saw him on TV. He was in London fighting a, a monster. And you were with the cape, and you were shooting laser beams out of your eyes. I don't wear a cape. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, we should just go inside, right? Can I call you Clark? Is that where you go by now? Because, you know, he called me worse. I, I don't know if it's because, you know, the whole mythology thing of, like, you know, in general in this thing. Like, they re refer to um, Athena. They refer to uh, Icarus, like actually Icarus and all that. Uh, I think they refer to Tinkerbell or Peter Pan type of thing. <laughs> That's the um, next Eternal in the next movie. <laughs> who, who, uh, Harry Styles is Peter Pan. <laughs> the little um, troll is um, Tinkerbell. <laughs> yeah, there were a few DC things in that. Mm. I actually got a question. So you know how some of these Eternals are named after great gods? Yeah. Aww. In Thor, Love and Thunder, Russell Crowe is playing Zeus. Zeus, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what's the deal? So the great gods of Olympus exist. But then there's Eternals who are based on who the Greek gods of mythology are based on. <laughs> Again, this Sorry. movie, this Sorry. movie, no, no, but like that's the point that we're making. This movie stresses no, but, me out. No, but this, so, but does that mean those characters don't exist? Like, are they just that's, the Eternals? It seems like Zeus exists. No, but who's Zeus? Russell Crowe. <laughs> Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise and flip. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no but what's, he, what's he in the Eternals? Huh? What's he in the Eternals? No, but he's well, not in the Eternals, but the fact that, like, yeah. the other god, great gods. No, but we haven't seen an Athena in the Greek gods so far. We haven't seen an Icarus. We haven't seen those additionals. So yeah, but, like, do they exist? Oh, right. Do they exist in the Greek? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we know right. there's, there might not be an Athena. Or maybe, an Icarus or anything. Oh yeah, maybe, but maybe there is like a an actual character that's like an actual Greek god that's like them, and I don't know. But that's what I'm saying. Like they could never use Athena as a Greek god, because right. like, can you imagine like I'm not like we haven't seen the movie, but Thor, Love and Thunder, they're all there, yeah. and then and then Angelina Jolie's Athena walks out, and then it's like I'm not actually a Greek god, but the Greek gods are based on me. And Zeus is like, wait, if the Greek gods are based on you, then am I real? Then like... well, that's, well, I'm at, that's actually what I'm just looking up now. So <laughs> there is. Um, so who there's... here is gods, and who here are based on gods? <laughs> Put up your hands. <laughs> so there, there is an Athena. Because mm. like it seems like the implication is that all all the other gods or mythologies are based off the Eternals. Yeah. I don't know how that works, so. Because <laughs> is there like another speed star that's like I don't, I don't know, my brain. Are we just maybe just like aspects of God mythology is actually about the Eternals and somehow got mixed up in the Greek mythology? Unless like some of the Greek gods were fans of the Eternals, so like they just took on the same name <laughs> and same powers. Whoever and like the actual Icarus that flew into the sun was like, "Well, oh, that's sick. I want to fly." And then it just flew into the sun. <laughs> it's just the more the universe is expanding, it's more it's going to get more complicated. Yeah, like again, I was excited at the time for them implying this, but it hurts my head to think about it because I don't get it yet. Oh, well, I still kind of don't get it. <laughs> um, um, uh, well, I think it's. I'm just doing a quick bit of reading. Does anyone know what the green tablet was about? The green no, tablet. No idea. She was trying to, uh, Makari was trying to steal this green tablet and then it's there in the, um, in the, on the ship with, there's a lot of treasures there. There's probably, yeah, I remember the treasures. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Oh, uh, well, they kept talking about some green tablet thing. I don't know what an iPad is. There's almost no way to explain it. So, how did you end up scoring this? Emerald tablet, my beautiful, beautiful Makari. I don't know, it's like the new iPad 7, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 just, I, I just remember that random reference to Vibranium, where... Uh, oh, that, that, actually, that was kind of funny. Uh, yeah, 
Pascal. It was random, but again, because yeah, yeah. it's like, how does it all connect? Yeah, yeah. He's like, I bet this table's made of vibranium. <laughs> and then, yeah. Boom. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? My child is right down the hallway. That looks like someone's been using these pillows. Oh, my God. I bet you've built the perfect safe house. Well, what's this even made of? Vibranium? <laughs> Fall collection. Ikea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the, um, my brain is getting confused. <laughs> yeah, trying to figure it. out this thing. Because, I, I, like, I, they've just chosen to go that way. Like, to base these Eternals. Like, I'm talking MCU, not actual comics. Right. Um, they ba- they've chosen to base them on, like, so Gilgamesh is, um... Based on the legend of Gilgamesh. So, like, if I, um, Festos is a Festus from Greek mythology. Crow is Cronus. Gilgamesh is Sumerian mythology. Who's, who's Crow? Uh, uh, Crow's the. Bill Sarsgaard. Yeah. Ah, the Deviant. Yeah. yeah. And then Eros is based on Eros, obviously. Like, and Sprite is connected to, like, sprites, tricksters, it's that sort of thing. But yeah, it's like, it's weird because yeah, like which which came first? <laughs> yeah, it's a chicken then, or the egg. <laughs> yeah, but then it's like, are they, but then it's like for the MCU, will they just not introduce an Athena? Mm. Like, will there be no Icarus, no Athena, no Crow, no no Cronus, no Eros, no? Like, yeah. will they just not have them in there? But can you imagine like Zeus being like? <laughs> You must fight my father, Kronos. Oh yeah, the Deviant, the green guy. <laughs> it's just, like, yeah. <laughs> I think again, that's just the universe is getting so big that it's hard to keep track of. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, even, yeah. even I think with Black Panther, I don't know. I'm pretty sure the vibranium. I think they were trying to play the idea that it's either aliens or it's not. But then mm. now it's like they're introducing Bust in Love and Thunder. The, Are they? Yeah, really? yeah, the, she's going to be in the god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Watch the trailer, bro. Hmm? She's yeah, literally in the trailer. Oh, really? I I missed it. Yeah. I was focused on Christian Bale, man. Pretty keen. When no, no, cool. when um, it's in the trailer when Thor and Portman are sitting down, like at the ah, desk, she, the table, she's sitting in front. Oh, ah, cool. I, Maybe I, that's I why Gore wants to kill the gods because he's like, I don't. Know, <laughs> <laughs> what came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> he's getting Eternals on the gods. Like, oh! Oh, it's easy. All gods will die. <laughs> they must die. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> I was a bit confused about one thing. Uh, the Eternals talked about how you know the the deviants were technically the first Eternals that created, but it was a mistake, so they made these new ones. But it seems like did they keep making deviants as they were? <laughs> I thought like the deviants were made. I swear they made the deviants to egg on the Eternals so that they could create energy that would make the Earth... Art to assist with to... progress. Yeah, yeah. I, th- yeah. But, like, so, I thought that's what the population was for. No, no, the, the deviants were created to kill the apex predators on the planet. Yeah. And then to help humanity grow, or whatever the human type um population was meant to be but then yeah they grew out of control from celestials which doesn't really make sense yeah yeah that's what i mean like they and just, then that's they just why keep the making eternals, these mistakes <laughs> yeah and then the eternals were dropped in to stop the deviants and let humanity keep going i guess that's the implication like there's no real way to control these like these things like you you're meant to have that free will in a sense i don't know <laughs> you'd feel like the celestials would be able to control them yeah but they like they them. keep they keep making stuff that they can't handle, and one yeah. I, I actually kind of find it funny that now there's in the MCU there's this giant celestial stuck in the in the ocean. It hasn't been referenced yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> I haven't seen it at all. <laughs> is that even, even the big hand or not? Yeah, not even yeah. a story. Even Arishim rocking up. No, it's <laughs> everyone keeps talking about the snap, but no one's talked about the big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. What's the timeline? Where does it occur in the movies? I, like I think the it, present present time of it. Yeah, yeah, but like what year? Like where is it compared to like Doctor Strange two and stuff? Oh yeah, that's true. And and uh, No Way Home. 
Yeah. No, it's before No Way Home and uh, Doctor Strange. I remember reading that. Okay. I so just don't know if it's before Shang Chi, but release order actually, right? Yeah. Like okay. What year does it actually have to compared to everything else? I'll look it up. What year? <laughs> Thinking <laughs> about so. that as well kind of hurts my head. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, remember our question was like in the Avengers, like, why don't they? Why aren't they helping each other? Do we just assume it's all happening simultaneously? Yeah, November, why, December, why are you helping with Deviant. Yeah. Like you'd be assuming that's making worldwide news, and it's yeah. aliens attacking again. Like, um, November, December, twenty twenty-three. Shortly after One Division, and months before Shang Chi. No, no, oh, I mean, it's before Shang Chi. No, but I'm saying where in the MCU does it? When in the MCU no. does it occur? No, that's that's it. No, that's that's the MCU before. Yeah. One, shortly after One Division, and months because before. this movie came after Shang Chi and One Division, mm. but it's set before Shang Chi. How that During helps. the flashback uh, to the day Ajax dies, she states that the events of Infinity War happened five years prior to the present day. Like the uh, only thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only thing like that makes sense is like, is it before or after the snap? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like you said, it's like, why didn't the Avengers help? Yeah, I who's mean, left? The Eternals. Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, I mean, Doctor Strange. Like, there's actual like. Different heroes. Yeah, they're still powerful up. Avengers, they're still powerful heroes. Like yeah. But like, but Doctor Strange their own had the problems. snow issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Doctor Strange had the snow issue. Um, who else? I'm just. <laughs> they <They're like> <laughs> their own problems. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. Yeah. Falcon and Winter Soldier on a boat. <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> wanders yeah. off on her own. Yeah, yeah, she's she's hopping she's between crazy. hopping between universes, dream walking. She's crazy over there. Yeah. yeah, but that's it. No one went and helped her either. So by the time they got to her, like, oh, we need you. It's like, sorry, <laughs> I've already gone crazy. You should have came a few months ago. <laughs> I would never hurt anyone. I'm not a monster. I'm. A... I'm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but like, not even oh, what's Thor doing? Like, not even Thor gets eluded. We'll find. Well, he's in. Um, oh yeah, yeah he went with the space. Guardians into space. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. As Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know where Captain Marvel is. She's off uh, on some planet. The excuse is always yeah that she's always flying off, patrolling the universe. Or something. Well, she would stay. Where, where's Coulson? <laughs> I think um, what they're he's saying, dead. yeah, in this... Oh, or is he dead? I don't even know anymore. No, in this timeline, I think they're implying he's dead and the Age yeah. of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a different timeline. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, I have this theory that Karun is a scroll <laughs> <laughs> Because he looks at the Deviant and he's like, oh, it's so beautiful. Is, is this a Deviant, sir? Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful creature. What? This? This? No, it's hideous. You've never had one try to bite your head off. Roll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, there's like there's this whole thing that the scrolls were kind of inspired by deviants because they changed form. Uh, like not another inspired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that does bring up a good point of like just the scrolls and who is who isn't, which is, have become one of them have been a scroll, which has become a background thing again now. Yeah, Trick and Jurig was a scroll. And that's why he that's why he tears the team apart. <laughs> Druid with Zemo. I will say this, and this is gonna sound crap, but um I, even though I like Druid, I got a thing about Barry Kogan. Like even before he played Joker. It's not that he's a bad actor, just there's something about him. Just, he looks creepy. That you yeah, don't maybe like. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but not even in a good creepy. Like not in like I want you to creepy be... though. <laughs> no, but like he played the Joker, and it's like, oh, you're creepy. I'll be great for the Joker. Like, no, you even you're too creepy for the Joker. But uh, it's, just... it's like Hannibal Lecter creepy. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, like young <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Chop out your liver and start eating it. <laughs> it's just the way he portrays things. Um, Eros, uh, the Harry Styles thing. Like, Weird. I don't know. It's weird because it's like, oh, I'm Thanos' brother. And I know it's a comic book thing, but it's like, it just, it's weird. Like, can you imagine Thanos, MCU Thanos, hanging out with Eros? It would have been cool when Thanos was still around. Like, he would have actually, yeah, uh, it, maybe. I don't, I don't know, know what 
I don't know what they're trying to. It's like, yeah, there's other like Eternals or whatever, but like, I just don't know what they were trying to allude to or casting they... Harry Styles too is a bit weird. Yeah, like I don't know what they're trying to do with it. It's yeah. I think this whole movie. It's just like, what are you trying to do with this movie in the bigger scheme of things? I also felt like it was just like an Adam Warlock thing where like they're trying to introduce <laughs> this supposedly cool character, but like, yeah, are they happens. really going to use him? I don't the know. difference between Adam Warlock is that was the character. <laughs> Back in like, the original movies was more we introducing you a character and you go look up the character. Now it's, oh, it's Charlie Theron. Who's she playing? Oh, it's Harry Styles. Who's he playing? Like, it's yeah. no longer the character, it's yeah. the actor. No, nah, but yeah. if you if you know Doctor Strange, you knew exactly who Charlize was straight away. That's a very yeah. comic. It's a very comic accurate. Um, so I knew who she was straight up because yeah. I've read the comics with her in it. Yeah, yeah, okay. I um, yeah, I was trying to think like because I was pretty keen when I heard Adam Warlock. I was I was like, oh, sick! He's gonna be sick. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, but arguably with uh her character and. Star Fox, I didn't really feel the same way. I wonder if it's like it's a, it's another thing for the fan base of those storylines. But I think because Eternals is just so out there, people would have been yeah. like, "What is this?" Unless you're a Harry yeah. Styles fan. <laughs> yeah, no, I had I I had no idea what was going on with that um, post credit scene. Even the uh, little troll, I know. Apparently, he's supposed to be Eros's. Um, Pip the troll or something like psychic, yeah. but it was just weird. Um, yeah. Oh, did you pick it was Blade? Not at first. No, no I had to. I had to do some Google rating for that. Yeah, but when I found out, I was like, cool. Yeah, I think it's because like, again, I know like Mahershala Ali, I reckon, is gonna kill it, but because mm. like, if it was Wesley Snipes' voice, you would pick it straight away. Like, oh, it's you. <laughs> <And> it... <laughs> Worse things out tonight than vampires. Like what? Like me. And I think like with Blade, if you, I know you can't do it, but if he drops like an F bomb, it's like, oh, it's Blade. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they did. It's like the second time though they've implied vampires, because uh, King Iron mentions it somewhere in the movie, and then I think um, Owen Wilson's character mentions vampires in Loki. Yeah, but they always do it as like, the, like more of a pop culture thing. They don't yeah. actually like. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that would be kept on the wraps by like a lot. I'm pretty keen for it though. But uh, again, because this movie is like Celestials and Eternals, it's like uh, vampires. Yeah, completely. <laughs> it's like a completely different world of the MCU. Yeah. Uh, this is um, a bit of a side note, but I remember listening to a podcast where they were like, yeah, Blade's cool, but if he joins the Avengers, his only use would be if, like, all right, we're going to go and fight. And he's like, all right, are there going to be vampires? <laughs> no. Okay. The dude, uh, <laughs> the dude literally got super speed and super strength. Like, yeah, but he's yeah, but his big... specialty is vampires. <laughs> Which it's just funny. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like have just a laugh, like... Monica. Just have a laugh. <laughs> but like, he's literally more powerful than some of the human Avengers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, can he, you know, a lot of them are run for their money. But you know, in oh, Endgame, yeah. where they all like running in to fight, mm-hmm. like. Can you imagine they're all running and then you see him running the opposite direction to the vampires? It's like, Where are the vampires? <laughs> There's got to be vampires out here. Uh, <laughs> actually, it would be sick because, like, in the Battle of Wakanda, he'd literally be right up there with, mm. like, running speed. He'd be there with Black Panther and Captain America. No, because uh, there wouldn't be any vampires. <laughs> Again, <laughs> um, just call them alien vampires. <laughs> That'd be interesting, actually. <laughs> I'd be like pretty interested in something like that, an alien vampire. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, the other thing, like Black Knight is a character I am excited for to see what yeah. they do, but like how, just the connection doesn't really make sense for this movie or Blade. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really I thought know. when they originally were gonna do it because I looked him up about Black Knight. I'm like, oh, it's maybe they're gonna do like a cosmic thing. Like they're not gonna make him supernatural. They're gonna make him like a cosmic, like the Eternals. Yeah. But then they're like, no, we're sticking with Supernatural. It's like, yeah. okay, but again, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it makes sense for the horror verse that they're building now. It yeah. doesn't make sense for the Eternals, Eternals universe. Yeah. Well, that's it. Like, they're going to do Werewolf by Night soon in, like, Disney+. Plus. Like, put him in that. Like, that's what you're saying about the horror. But even put him in Doctor Str- I think it would have made sense in Doctor Strange. At this point, the movie by Black Knight with Martin Lawrence came out in, like, 2001. <laughs> 
I've got that. Yeah. I've got that on video. <laughs> <laughs> My only thing I'll say, I'm pitching an Avengers movie where like the whole movie Blade's just waiting to like you know the vampires come and straight at the end. It's like, wait, are they vampires? <laughs> 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 He's, he's not even here yet. We're doing him dirty. He's I, I love Blade. 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 I just, yeah. I just think... It's like Aquaman with fish. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to be in the water? Oh, no. But could you imagine that fits? He only fights at night as well. No. It's like all the battles can't happen in the morning. Like, sorry, guys. I'll fight them later. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. The Deep has kind of ruined Aquaman for me. <laughs> just wait till you get to the next, to this, to the US season. I watch clips of Hero Gasm and. Yeah, the bit with the deep, I was like, yeah, no, nah, that's what I'm not going It gets worse, the episode. It after. gets uh, worse. Yeah, it gets worse. <sighs> All right, we'll, we'll go on to our last phase, phase four, Toby Maguire rating and whether this movie hypes you up for phase four. It's in the Avengers. The Avengers? Yeah. That's great. Thank you. What is that? Earth's finest. I'm just helping. All right. Toby Maguire rating. Do you remember what I gave Guardians? Guardians two, uh, I think four or something. Potentially, yeah, it might have been four. like a four and a half or something. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, it was like a four point seven. I gave it some obscure rating. <laughs> yeah, probably. Look, this movie isn't to me isn't as bad as the other two that I've named. Yeah, like it's a passable MCU movie, and I reckon the thing that purely set like. There's a couple of things that save it, mostly because and it's the powers are cool. The actors and actresses that they chose, except for like one or two that we've mentioned that could have been done with other, um, that could have been cast better. But for yeah. the most part, that was pretty good. Um, I know what you gave Guardians to. You're going to be surprised. A five. <laughs> oh, I think I think my reasoning was I don't want any Marvel movie to be better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, like the, the fight scenes were pretty awesome. Mm. Um, I think the soundtrack was good. I can't remember. And so there were a few tiny little saving graces that put it above those other movies. Okay. And look, we have no idea what they're going to do in the MCU with this movie, which is like you're saying, they're worrying. Mm. But at the same time possibly good it honestly just depends how this phase four goes and the way it's going it means it's slightly worrying what they're going to do with eternals um like if they've just chucked it in not knowing where to chuck it in the timeline but they were like stuff at covid screwed up our timelines let's just release it now before everything else because that was one of the movies that got delayed and like COVID sort of stuffed up that two years of Marvel movies and TV shows. Yeah, it did quite a bit. Um, so I think they just went, we need to give the audience something to watch because we haven't released a movie in a while. Um, and so they may have just been shoehorned into the MCU timeline. Yeah. And so <laughs> my Toby is out of Maguire's. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say five point seven. Five point okay. Oy. It's the same as um yeah, X Men the last thing. It doesn't <laughs> like it doesn't fail as a Marvel movie, but it just it's not memorable for me at all. And hell, hell they might Feige might prove me wrong and in two years we're doing another podcast and it's and it's like now I understand why Eternals happened. Hmm. And that five point seven jumps to a six point seven. Like, I don't know. But for the moment, it just, for me, isn't critical in the MCU. You could skip mm. it, and it will do nothing to your MCU watching. That's that's actually really, like, I feel like that's more true with this movie than a lot, because it's just a whole other... It's universe. inconsequential to the <laughs> yeah. MCU at the moment. Yeah, it, it's literally like it's a multiverse, and it's happened in a completely <laughs> other multiverse. The MCU's gotten so big that Celestials and Eternals don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Which is ironic. <laughs> that, yeah, because they actually, yeah, because they actually do so much, or yeah. don't do so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Five point right. seven, Toby's. Uh, it's your turn. Yeah, look, I actually thought this movie was going to be, to be honest, probably the most 
like I, I didn't think this was going to go bad because like the director Chloe Zhao, like the year before she won best um, best picture for a film called Nomad Land, which I never watched. But like <laughs> <laughs> the point is, like she's a very up there director, and then like got a great cast. I just think the problem was, I re- I refer this to like my friends and our Marvel fans, and I remember one of my friends saying, David. I, I um, came out of uni after I did like an exam on existence and where we are in the universe. And I went to go and see Eternals and I was like, oh, great. I have to sit through my essay all over again. And I go to my Marvel movies to have fun. And like, I'm not saying like, like I said, I'm big on themes and I'm big on going very deep into those themes. I just think the way they went about it was very boring and very sluggish and very, at the same time, overwhelming. And like I said at the beginning, this could have been a 90-minute film. It didn't need to be that long. Mm. And, like, does it make me hopeful? To be honest, it sounds weird, but, like, if you go to the Eternals in the comics, they're actually more in line with not so much the humour, but the aesthetic that Taika's movies go for, like the Jack Kirby, colourful, cosmic, out-of-this-world type feels. So I feel like next time they should go more... Like, again, not like high comedy, but just make it a bit more like 80s sci-fi and go more flashy mm-hmm. because I just, they tried this way and it didn't work and maybe the only way you can do it is to go in a new direction. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, look, I'm not, I can't say it's a terrible film. It's just an underwhelming film. And, like, I don't think I'll, it's one that, like, I've rewatched all the Marvel movies many times. I don't think I'll be watching this anytime soon. <laughs> Right, and the dog, um, the dog wants to join right at the end. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, Frankie, Frankie, up here. You take these out of my glass. <laughs> but yeah, and it's again, it's sad because this was a great cast. But um, yeah, I think another thing is I kind of wonder if the cast was like, we just want to do this once because that's how I get the vibe of like not not so much that they hate MCU, but the film feels like we're all just here to make a film. We're not here to expanded universe hmm. so all up i give it 4.9 tobies out of 10 so not that solid eight you originally said no, no not the solid eight <laughs> not a solid eight <laughs> no, not, a solid yeah. 4.9 no <laughs> uh, but a solid eight for the attempts to go for those things is that, is that the lowest hmm. you've given an mcu movie fit i think so yeah uh yeah. no i can't remember oh the only one i could think that could be close is Thor the Dark World or yeah, Thor the Dark World. That's the only one I could think that could be close to it. Okay. Or well, Iron Man 3. Not Guardians 2. <laughs> Thor the Dark World. You gave Thor the Dark World a 5. Okay. And then Iron Man 3 a 6. Uh, okay, yes, this is my lowest. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, it rounds off to a 5, but yeah, it still uh, just doesn't get I think fun. it's like, if I still have fun in it, it's like when I went and saw Morbius, I'm like, look, if I have fun in this, it's still going to be good. And mm. I got bored out, out of my brain. So <laughs> I'm just like, like I haven't watched Morbius. Don't. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm going with. I've read so much negative negativity about it. I'm like, I don't want to waste my time watching it. Just movies. follow the memes. That's all you need to do. More than time. <laughs> yeah. That's all I say. It's more Blade, than time. Blade, Blade's watching it because there's vampires above. <laughs> <laughs> He's stabbing the screamer. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, my turn. Uh, not much more for me to say. Again, I still don't think uh, it, or at the time, I remember it being like really bad. And again, when I watched it, I was just like, this isn't that bad. But then you keep going. I was like, oh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so, I mean, just quickly, Toby's out of Maguire's. I'll probably give it just a five, straight up five, similar to Mark. Um, Again, yeah, I think MCU now has the benefit of just like its reputation as like being able to, you know, create films and fix films. But I feel like this is one, like David said, they were flying too close to the sun. Yeah, but this didn't actually make anywhere near. I'm pretty sure this was probably one of the high, lowest earning um, oh, movies really? for them. It only COVID wouldn't have helped. Box office, 402.1 million. What right. does Shang-Chi do? Budget was 200. Uh, Shang-Chi would have done two. over a billion easy. Yeah, yeah. It was, oh, it... no. 432. Because yeah. COVID would have affected it. Yeah, yeah COVID, COVID killed both of those. So movies. it doesn't say what Disney Plus uh, <laughs> uh, figures were. 
A word of mouth would have killed Eternals, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So um, funnel. Actually, speaking of that, so just going off what we're saying because of COVID. So no way home. One point nine billion. Yeah. Well, as soon as we're back. Oh no! Actually, for some countries, it weren't. Godzilla vs Kong got more cash than Shang Chi. <laughs> mm. That's a no IP. Four hundred and seventy yeah. million. Godzilla vs Kong though has like a rep- like Godzilla and King Kong yeah. have reputation. Venom, Venom beat it. Um, Venom beats Shang Chi. Yeah, Venom was five hundred and six million. Oh. Fast Nine was seven hundred and twenty six million. I've got to blame COVID hard. <laughs> yeah, I reckon people went to known IPs. Like, even though Marvel's a known IP, Shang Chi wasn't known much. Yeah, yeah. Actually, fun fact: MCU has ten movies bring in over a billion dollars from the box office out of twenty something. It's mm. close to half of them. But it's just funny, like such that, like, yeah, it actually didn't bring in that much. But then you look at it, and it's like, well, Shang Chi, we loved it. Actually, didn't bring in that much more than yeah. Eternals, which is very surprising. It's funny, like, with Eternals, it's like, you come off Shang-Chi, you go to Eternals, like, oh, but then you go to No Way Home, and, like, you just forget Eternals, because No Way Home just, like, like, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And again, imagine all three of those movies coming out in the same year. No, it's... Chuck in Venom as well. Not to mention four movies. The year before, there was no no content Mm. at all, which was, which hadn't, hadn't happened since 2009. Yes. That's um, when the podcast started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> COVID podcast. All right. Uh, yeah, I already said my thoughts on it and rating. Uh, that effectively ends our discussions of Eternals. This went uh, longer than as long as the movie. <laughs> I think. But hopefully, way more interesting and more than a five out of ten. <laughs> but, anyways. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, boys, for joining in the discussions. Appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to the next one. Big one. No way home. Yeah. Ooh. I'll need to watch that one again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I watched it way too many times at the cinema. I was Spider-Man down. But, like, anyways. Yeah, I went through. Thing. I went four. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, only watched, I've only watched each MCU movie once at the movie. Yeah, right. That, that tracks. Most efficient. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not a true MCU fan. I'm just on the train. I'm on the bandwagon. But you've seen them all. Like there's yes. still people who haven't seen them. All right. Anyways, uh, yeah. Again, tune in next uh, episode for No Way Home, and then our, our added content, our side mission episodes, and DC heads. We decided to do more of that. Uh, till then, thanks for can watching. I, can I hop on oh. one of those just because I'm like completely negative on a lot of DC movies? <laughs> We're yeah. gonna do uh, Man of Steel next. So We're gonna do Man of Steel next. Oh. Can I hop onto that one? Yeah, yeah. We'll yes. I yeah. actually need to watch it again because I watched that way too long ago. Sorry for the segue out of our ending of this uh, segment. Yeah, no, I always want to plug DC heads. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Fitzy hosts that one, so. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, thanks for watching. Great. Great.